Hey, what's up guys? Diego here. Today I have a 2007 S600 uh, that needs a rear main seal. It's not the only reason it's here. It actually needs the intelligent servo module and I told the customer he could save some labor hours by doing both at the same time. So I basically started by removing the bottom shield. It's a bunch of eight millimeter bolts. Then uh, I started to remove the exhaust, which is uh, E10 uh, extend, uh, external torx bolts, two of them uh, on a V-band clamp. It's not very easy to get to, so I actually had to get some uh, rust penetrant on there to get it loose because the angle just didn't allow much torque. In this model, you actually have to remove the whole exhaust as a unit. Uh, you can't remove side by side. So here I show you all the bolts you kind of need to get to to remove as a as a as a whole piece. Once the rear has been removed, uh, you can start by removing the supporting brackets that hold onto the transmission mount, and those are uh, 10 millimeter bolts. So they're fairly easy to get to. So here I'm using a wobble socket. I actually started with a very small 3 8 ratchet. See if uh, maybe I could use some elbow grease and get it out by that way, but it was just too rusty. So I put some rust penetrant on there and began with the uh, the long ratchet. So I intentionally left a little bit of struggle on there so you could see how difficult it actually was to come out. Um, so just leave it in its intended position so you know how to put it back on because there's one lip and if you put it incorrectly it just won't go on. Then I started removing the oxygen sensor cables um, just so that when the, the whole piece dropped it didn't tug on the wires and we don't have to replace any of that.
So here I'm at the top and on most S550s you can actually uh, remove the oxygen sensor connector from the back but given this is a S600 V12 the connectors actually go through the top and they're not very fun to remove but definitely doable. Um, you can see I remove uh, just a little compartment there for the wire which allowed me a little bit more room to remove them and you actually remove them by uh, getting the two clips on the sides undone so I used a pick um, the more worn out ones can just be pulled and they disconnect fairly easily but this one wasn't the case so put everything back so I can close back the hood because my lift doesn't have mu that much room up top for an open hood So now back at the bottom, I used a 90 degree pick to remove the exhaust hangers. These are actually a lot easier than any other types I've seen that you have to grease up before it comes out. And here I am trying to pull out the exhaust uh, by force and then realizing that there was actually two extra bolts holding it together. So once those got removed, uh, the whole thing dropped really easily. I guess this part just shows uh, everything a little bit closer. Um, I know I was curious how these all looked. They're actually pretty similar to the newer style uh, 4.7 liter turbos, similar setup. Um, and everything's fairly accessible once you remove the exhaust manifold. So this engine's really not all that bad to work on. You can kind of see where all the bolts for the transmission go and uh, the coolant lines for the transmission so all in all fairly accessible I don't know what happened here and uh, why I don't have the video of this coming out, but I actually uh, removed the cables and the lines fairly easily. Uh, it was just uh, four bolts all together, two for the bracket, two for the lines, and then uh, it just all dropped onto the side so that we can uh, drop the transmission and not worry about any cables getting snagged. So with the cables out of the way and the coolant um, transmission cooler lines disconnected, I put some gloves over the lines just because if you just leave it like that, you'll get a steady drop and it just leaves a mess on the floor. So I was doing pretty well up until this point on maintaining everything clean, but later on you'll see what happened.
I removed all the e torques that I could from the transmission bell housing with the long ratchet. They're fairly soft, so you can pretty much use the same amount of force going back in. But uh, once you get to the top, you're actually going to have to use one of these. Uh, I don't know what they're called specifically, but they're uh, kind of three eighths adapters into a wrench so that you can have like a low profile wrench uh, or shorter wrench. They come in really handy when you get stuck. So there's two bolts up there that I had to use that on. Then right here, I removed the uh, oil dipstick tube. Uh, it's just a 10 millimeter, and then I used a flathead and a hammer to push it up. Once that was done, I uh, realized I needed to remove the, the front heat shield or uh, splash shield out of the front to gain access to the harmonic balancer. As you can see, it's a 27 millimeter socket. It goes on there and you can spin it. It has more room than some other cars I've worked on, so I'm thankful that was easy enough. Once you spin it, just uh, spin it until you can see two bolts and with uh, 12 or 13 millimeters, undo the flywheel to torque converter bolts. There should be six of them. Once those are removed, uh, remove all the bolts and just give it a uh, look around. Make sure you don't forget anything because uh, in the next few steps we're going to be dropping the transmission. All the cables are done. Uh, now we just have to remove the drive shaft and the rear transmission mount. The transmission mount bolts are held in by 16 millimeters uh, hex bolt, and they're actually fairly soft in there so no struggling I think that's one of the things I really like about Mercedes I'm not sure what material they use about with their bolts but somehow they're never really stuck or rusted on there I think they're just ionized maybe uh, then lower pan or lower cross member bolt 13 millimeters again and then finally uh, to get access to the drive shaft, uh, another four 13 millimeter bolts. Make sure to remove the, the ground strap, that's also a 13 millimeter. So usually uh, the drive shaft would be able to spin, uh, but given this intelligent servo module, uh, if you don't know what it is, it's basically a motor that shifts the, the gears uh, between you know park, reverse, neutral, and drive. Instead of having a wire that goes from the cabin to there, it's basically just a electronic motor that does it. Uh, these fail quite often. This is what happened to this car. So. Uh, I was not able to put it in neutral to rotate the drive shaft, so I had to uh, remove an extra bolt out of the drive shaft um, flex disc assembly. And uh, once I got those four out, uh, I was able to get it, but it was not an easy task. Uh, it's actually edited, so you could see just the easy part of it. Make sure to retain the, the washers that go on the nut side uh, because that's going to allow you to torque the, the bolt properly. If it's not on there, you might get uh, a wrong torque reading.
It's normal for the drive shaft to be a little bit stuck to the flex disc, so you can use a pry bar to kind of get it off. Uh, for this the car, it was actually harder than normal. Usually there's a good amount of room between the drive shaft and the transmission. So just prying it out, you can just take it out of the way, but somehow uh, this one was just extra stuck. So I had to move the transmission up and down a little bit to, to get it to move out of the way and clear uh, for everything to come out. So now that everything's out of the way, uh, if you actually read the manual, unlike I did, uh, you would see that the manual tells you to um, pry the torque converter away from the flywheel because it actually gets stuck. This is not a problem I've ran into any other cars before, but apparently Mercedes is aware of it. And uh, I just made a huge mess attempting to, to pry it out or attempting to remove the transmission. I was wondering why it was so stuck until I could see the torque converter got stuck. I assumed I just forgot to remove some bolts, but as you can see, it, it it's actually pretty stuck on there. So uh, for anybody watching, just 
remember to pry that torque converter out before uh, before trying to remove the transmission otherwise you're gonna end up like me So now that we have everything out of the way um, to prevent any further messes, uh, remove the engine oil because in certain cars the engine oil will go slightly below or at where the rear main seal sits and uh, removing that rear uh, cover will actually leave a good amount of oil to come out. So to prevent any further messes, I lower the, uh, remove the engine oil and uh, make sure to replace that crush, crush washer on the oil pan. Otherwise, you might have some oil seepage down the road for a bad seal.
So now that the rear housing has been removed, uh, we can start the cleaning process to make sure the surfaces are ready for new gasket material. Removing the old seal is fairly easy. Just uh, make sure not to touch the edge of the, the housing to make it clean. Just tap on the seal downwards until it comes out. Should be pretty easy. So there's the old one. And I'm going to start cleaning it. Um, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate in the comments for this, but. I actually use a, a, a wire wheel to clean the surfaces. Certain car manufacturers make it almost a sin to do this to your to the housings as they're machined, uh, but I view it as the gasket material is made to uh, make or seal uneven surfaces and uh, scoring it actually uh, makes the seal better. Obviously this is unproven but I have done this on many many cars and none of them leak. I make sure to clean it thoroughly and dry it with a uh, brake clean so that all we're getting is exposed metal. You can see there the wire wheel is not as abrasive as some people might think and it's not gouging the metal but actually just removing the old material I see it as uh, it's better to have rough metal than smooth metal with old gasket on there so this is the way I do it apply some gasket a beta gasket but to make sure everything's good, I use a glove and spread the gasket around the surface. And then I put on the timing, or I suppose it's not a cover, or a timing cover, it's just a cover, the rear cover back on and tap it with a hammer uh, to make sure it's well seated. So once you thread all the bolts by hand and you make sure the, the hole you're threading is clean, um, I just go through with them and with the drill and make sure that they hit the end of it so that I don't have to you know, save myself a couple extra seconds per bolt. And I use a extra small uh, 3 8 ratchet to put about 100 inch pounds. Obviously, this is not a scientific method of doing it, but uh, the the manual did not specific, uh, give me any torque specs for this rear housing. Um, given it's an 
M8 or M7 bolt, as most of the other ones, other small ones are. I can see about 100 inch pounds is really the max they can take. So now I installed the rear main seal. Uh, it really goes in easily by hand, uh, but it's not 100% seated correctly. I actually had to make myself a, a tool. Uh, Mercedes sells you one for $500, and I'm not spending uh, the whole budget of this this job on a tool. So I cut out a notch on a on a bolt to make sure that the sides all go in down evenly. Um, it's not about how deep it goes, although you don't want it to go too deep, but uh, you want it to be deep enough and even enough around so that the seal doesn't get damaged prematurely. Then we install new uh, Torx bolts for the flywheel, given the manual scared me enough, saying that actually old bolts could snap with time. So I uh, went ahead and spent a couple extra dollars, I think it was $20 in total for the bolts, and uh, snug them down with the gun and then torque them to 45 newton meters plus 90 degrees so I go in for the first round for 45 newton meters and then I mark them all at the 12 o'clock position and then I go ahead and give it the final 90 degrees with the breaker bar
So now this is the second time putting the transmission up. Um, this is after I had to remove it again and the torque converter got stuck again on the dry plate and I dropped some more oil. You can see there's more rags on the on the housing and there's some brake cleaner dripping because I had to clean it again. Hey guys, future Diego here. So I decided to make the second half of the video um, sped up just simply because um, I'd really be repeating myself and uh, I'd like to think that if you're attempting this to yourself, you can uh, figure it out how to put it back together um, once you took it out, obviously, and with the guidance <laughs> that I gave you from the beginning. Um, I'm going to be posting the pictures of the uh, repair manual at the end of the video just so you can have um, another tool to complete this job successfully um, I don't see uh, what I could add to this uh, besides saying the banjo bolts um, the banjo bolt copper washers or crush washers however you want to talk say them uh, they need to be replaced um, because sometimes they can uh, they can be on they're too tight and the crush well, I mean the, the job of the crush washer is to seal the two surfaces with a softer metal but once they're very used uh, they can they can uh, they cannot seal properly so 
replace them uh, and uh, I guess that's it so oh no psych <laughs> I forgot one more thing uh, the you're gonna need a transmission fluid uh, dipstick and you can get this at advance or Amazon or whatever uh, this is one of the late last cars for Mercedes that had a dipstick in it uh, this is the 7226 transmission that still had a dipstick well dipstick too no dipstick um, so you buy the dipstick and uh, you let the vehicle warm up you put it between uh, all the gears park reverse neutral drive uh, a couple times um, and you add you know a quart at a time basically uh, so uh, once that's done you just check the fluid uh, make sure you have that on hand or else you're not going anywhere afterwards it really just depends how much fluid you lost in this whole transaction um, if you if the torque converter got stuck like it did for me um, I actually added about three quarts um, and without the cooler lines uh, with, with the cooler lines removed that I only lost about half a quart so altogether you know three quarts would be a safe amount to have on there but just know that you do need the dipstick to complete this job besides obviously all your torque sockets all hex bits uh, picks transmission jacks um, anyways this is getting too long so uh, if you have any questions uh, I'm very familiar with the W221 series and uh, I can help you in the comments if you have any help if you have any help if you have any help if you have any questions um, I'm, I'm, I'm more than well uh, willing to, to answer them for you um, and like I said, the, the end of the video will show some uh, pictures of the repair manual to, to help you get some extra, to help you get some extra, uh, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. You know what I mean. I'll be at the end. Thank you.